<sighs> hey everyone, Ronnie Landis here, and I am just coming to you live from the big island of Hawaii, and I am over here on the island. Literally, I'm on one of the, the oceans on Maku. Muku Drive, that's a long, huge drive out here if anyone knows what that road is. But at the very end of it is this somewhat secluded uh, ocean. With it's, it's basically encased with lava rocks. You can see right here, all these rocks. This goes for stretches of miles and miles, the beautiful ocean tide right now. It's in response to the new moon that we have uh, entered into, that we're entering into that phase, the new moon phase. And we're going to go through all the all the lunar progressive cycles uh, once again. We were just in Mercury retrograde. We're still in it, you know. Some say, um, and what that brings up for people is individual. For me, on being on the Big Island, what it's brought up for me is uh, just a host of things, you know. Just really not even to get into details here, but it just brought up certain areas of my own psyche, of my personal identity, my you know, all the different themes that I've gone through in my life, the different roles, the different lives that I've played in this one life. And it brought a lot of that stuff to the surface and I had to deal with it. I had to identify it. I had to work through it. I had to look at what's going on in my life right now and kind of do a life assessment, kind of do a life balance sheet where I'm weighing out my, my things that are, are accountabilities in my life, the, the liabilities in my life and the habits that I have and then also looking at my strengths, looking at the things that are, are benefiting me right now. And it's been, it's been a ride. And we're going through that cycle right now where we're having to look at ourselves differently. We're having to um, unlodge a lot of the lodged in emotions and the, the memories that we might have that have been stored for years and years, maybe even genetically through past lives and replicated or accumulated to the point, to the breaking point where a lot of people now are just you know, all the trauma is coming out and we have to learn how to deal with that. We have to be able to channel that. We have to become the inner alchemist in our own lives and learn how to transmute the ills of the world into the blessings, into the miracles of the world. And that's, that's been a theme for me lately. And so I'm here on these rock fields. I'll show you guys again. I basically, every single day this week, I've been here running these this, this lava field, I've been running up and down, parkouring through all the rocks. It's funny because I grew up as a martial artist. I always kind of thought of myself as like Mowgli from the Jungle Book. I never really understood being encased around like concrete and walls and ceilings and artificial lighting and kind of this really distorted, uh, you know, uh, pseudo environment that we've all been kind of uh, given. And I was always confused by that. I didn't like restrictions. And then I got into climbing mountains. I got in getting into the wilderness. I got into doing stuff like this, running along, along the rocks. And that felt more comfortable to me, even as an athlete running on bare surface, running on flat ground for literally five miles every single day when I was on a fighter schedule. And it, that just never seemed totally comfortable with me, even though I did it religiously. Being here running at, you know, high speeds on these rocks, hopping from rock to rock, I feel more natural. I feel my inherent um, myelinated coordination and my neurosynaptic uh, impulses through my muscular system are firing without me having to think too much about it. That's the interesting thing is that I don't really have to think about it. I get into a flow and then I start hopping from, from rock to rock and it just perpetuates itself. The more I just am in flow with it, I just let my body do what it instinctually knows how to do. And that's kind of a, that's a theme showing up too, is, is getting back into the flow of things, getting back into the holy flow of life and not taking life so personally. I think a lot of us grow up in this world, we have uh, post-traumatic stress syndrome from life. It's not just when you come back from war. We're literally going through the battlefield of the mind on a daily basis since we are incarnated into this world and all our astrological data or astrological coordinates were imparted upon to us as we entered into uh, the gravity field, which is Earth. You know, that's kind of how I've been thinking about it lately. And every single day, we're, we're going through the aging process. Every single day, we're going through an oxidation process. And through tuning up our lifestyle, we can either inhibit 
the, the acceleration of that oxidation to our body, to our, our brain, to our tissues, to our skeletal structure. The reality is every single part of our body and mind, unless we tune it up on a daily basis, is decaying. It is withering away. That's why there's so much wisdom in soaking up the vital life force of every single day. It's, it's not taking any days for granted. It's being here, being now, but also being in the flow of things because there really, there is no now. The power of now is a great concept for people that are stuck in their cerebral state. They're stuck in the, the wiring of their mind and trying to figure everything out and they're, they're analytical and they're more in a mathematical linear state of reality. But as soon as you start to open up your heart, as soon as you start to open up different, different pathways in your, your brain, um, you become more of a conduit. You don't necessarily need to be in the now so much because it becomes a habit. It's like everything. It's, it's all habitual. It's all what we ingrain on a day-to-day -day basis. And so that's when the next step comes and That's when getting into the holy flow becomes the new norm, becomes the new uh, progressive uh, format for how do we experience reality. Instead of just being here now and trying to take a photo of now, and piece it to another now and another now, instead of divisioning it out, it's just a flow. Everything is melding together in this beautiful orchestrated flow of life and that, that's the holy flow. That's being in tune with the universe and that's, that's what it is when I'm running on these lava rocks. When I'm running across these lava rocks next to the, the, the ocean here that's being influenced by the lunar cycles right now, that's, that's you know, it's, it's literally speaking right here. This is, this is waves of emotion, commotion, and yeah, that's the ocean. <laughs> um, but anyways, the point is, when I'm running down these rocks, I'm in a flow. And if this moment I stop to think, oh, be in the moment, I need to stop, I need to, to, I need to be in this moment, I stop, my flow stops, the progression of my physical expression stops, and I'm more liable to fall and hurt myself. But if you get into a flow, everything cyclically, synchronistically, sequencely connects together. And then that's how we create the, the fluidity of our reality. And getting in tune with nature, getting out here into this paradisical environment is so key for that. It's so critical for that. I can't encourage that enough. And when you come to the big island, you're not just coming to you know, a nice little beach and you're just going to hang out. You're, you're going to do work. You're going to do your interpersonal work, your inner sovereignty work, and you're going to get in touch with who you are, who you've been, and start to erase the old storyboard of the past and start to create a new script for who you are becoming, who, what, not just who you want to be, not just getting an idea of what you want, because nobody really knows what they want. But if you get an idea for what's trying to work through you, the vision that's trying to pull you forward, then again, that's how you get into the state of flow. Ease, flow, and grace. That's how it works, guys. And I'm continually working on myself, chipping away at the sculpture or polishing it up at this point, um, and just smoothing out the edges so I can continually get into that, that state of flow, that ease, flow, and grace and to feel the holy, sacred presence of what is living around me and in me and what wants to be expressed through me. That's, that's what being on purpose is all about.